I want to welcome you here live to Billy Harrison Fieldhouse Camp Golf Coast State College in Panama City Beach, Florida. Game three, day one, the battle at the beach. Freed Hardeman, number eight in the country. Xavier, Louisiana, number 22 in the country. The Lions in the gold rush. In this one, Jeremy Smith alongside David Turner bringing you all of the action, the starters first for Freed Hardeman, number zero, six one, sophomore guard out of Bolivar, Tennessee, Quan Lax. Number one, a six foot sophomore guard out of Clarksville, Tennessee, JJ Wheat. Number two, a six seven sophomore forward out of Calhoun, Georgia, Peyton Law. Number three, a six seven senior forward out of Nashville, Tennessee, Hunter Skurlock. And number 33 is 6'6", six, six, junior four, out of Kansas City, Missouri, Devin Tomlinson, the starters for Xavier, David Turner. For the gold rush, it is number 13, Corey Wells. He's a 6'7", senior from Murphy, Texas. Number 13, Glenn Roan, a 6'5", senior forward from New Orleans, Louisiana. Number 21, Jathan Ross. He's a 6'1", junior guard from Bossier City, Louisiana. Number 23, Lance Williams, a 6'1", junior guard from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And finally, number 32, DJ Morgan the 6'7 senior of center from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. No score here, and there's the first bucket of the day, and it's off the hand of J.J. Wheat. So 19 minutes to go in the first half, and it's a 3-0 lead for Fried Hardeman. Xavier in the black with the gold numerals and the white trim. Works it up top. There's the handoff, working back across the face of the basket. The attack to the elbow, gets it back out. Now handoff right side. Pulls it downhill from the elbow, back iron no good, off the jumper from Corey Wells. So shot clock goes off, and we'll see. There's 20 on the shot clock here, and it'll be Xavier basketball. Yeah, shot clock never reset. Yeah, there you go. So 18 seconds now on the shot clock. Thrown in to DJ Morgan. Morgan gets it over into the hand of Williams. Now Ross. Back out no good on the jumper. Rebound taken down by Morgan. Fouled by they're going to put it on number two of Freed Hardman, Peyton Law. No, they're going to say two shots. Foul on number 33, Devin Tomlinson. 18-22 remaining, and the free throw up and good for Tomlinson. One more coming. Tomlinson makes that. Stolen up and off the glass and good. And and one and going to the line is going to be Corey Wells. Free throw good there. Trap coming. 
Fires it over. Throws it ahead. Picks it up, feeds it underneath to the paint. Wraps it back out in the corner. Working left side now. Attacks to the elbow, floats it up, no good. Tipped alive and the Lions will keep it. There's a three, Quan Lax drains it. Man from Bolivar, Tennessee. Over the timeline. Left wing, dumped down to the block. Right wing, three. Back iron, no good. Rebound tipped around. Corralled and taken down is Wheat. Wheat into the paint, back out. There's a three. No. And a foul on the floor. Let me get the bump on Hunter Skurlock. So Skurlock picks up his second. He'll check out. And into the bowl game for the first time is Sam Powell, six foot seven redshirt freshman out of Buckner, Kentucky. That's number 20 for the Lions. And for the Gold Rush, number 11, TJ Jones, a graduate guard from Opelousas, Louisiana. Number 20 as well as in, Chris Ward, the fifth year senior from the Bronx, New York. Ball bounced over left side. There's the attack down the hill, works it over right wing. Back out. Floated over the top, into the corner. And stolen. Going the other way on the ball is J.J. Wheat. And there's a foul. Foul is going to be on T.J. Jones of Xavier. Xavier foul, number 11, T.J. Jones. Ball will be thrown in by Wheat. And another foul. Ball hit the end line. Oh, hit it the end in. line, okay. Tomlinson, the intended target there. Xavier works it up the floor. Xavier in on the season at 3-0. Wins over Dillard, College of Biblical Studies, and Alcorn State. Back out. That jumper no good. Rebound tipped out of bounds, and it'll go to Freed Hardeman. Freed Hardeman wins over UT Southern, Reinhardt, Tougaloo, and Oakwood. And then a loss in Jackson, Mississippi to Tougaloo. That happened in their last outing. That was Thursday. Eight five is the score, 15-50 remaining in the opening half. Working left, downhill. Back iron, no good. Rebound taken down, picked up off the floor. Fight for the ball. Playing on the end line, it'll be Freed Hardeman basketball. Yeah. Number 24 for Freed checks in. That's Phil Horton, 6'6", sophomore forward from Somerville, Tennessee. Works it ahead. And stolen. Deflected, and Horton comes away with it again. There's a three from the right wing, off target, tipped alive, and out of bounds. They'll stay with Freed Hardeman. Peyton Law's three didn't go, but Freed able to keep possession.
15-13 remaining. All thrown up top. No over right wing. There's Law. Into the paint, deflection. Going the other way, over the timeline. There's the attack. Now back out. Works it back up top. Deflected again, and Freed Hardeman can't quite come up with it. Layup off the glass and good. Xavier now down his one. Top. Attack. Through feed. Can't get it to go and hard contact there. Put the foul on number 20, Chris Ward. The six foot nine fifth year out of the Bronx, New York. Free throw back iron, no good for Sam Powell. One more coming for Powell. That one is good. Over left side, now back. Over the timeline. DJ Jones on the basketball. Knocked out of bounds and it was deflected off the Xavier players, so Lion basketball. Phil Horton helping create chaos defensively from the moment he's gotten in. He's deflected a few already. He has. A couple of steals, a lot of deflections defensively for him. And over left side, Horn. Wheat got it down to the block and a nice take for, I that was for her all the lane. It was. Lane, the 6'5 junior out of Huntsville. Working right now, back over. Attacks, top of the key, step back, and nice. Finish on that shot for Keon Nixon. Nixon from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Weed on the attack, poke loose, and a scrum for the ball. Whistle's gonna give it to Xavier going the other way. A foul called on J.J. Wheat. Basketball throws it back up top. TJ Jones swings it over to Kean Nixon, who's checked into the ball game. 6'6 junior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Jeremy Lindsay on the ball. He'll draw the foul, which is called on Wheat. Two quick ones on JJ Wheat. There's the handoff to TJ Jones. Jones to the elbow, nice feed to the baseline, up off the glass and good for Jason Ross. So tie game, 11-11, 12-39 and count. Works over right side. Back up top, now left side, that's gonna be long. Back over right side, dump down. Turn around, good. Tough shot off the baseline from Phil Horton. 13-11 is the score. Looking right, now back over. Ian Nixon. 
Rebound taken out, going the other way. Bait long. Back up top, Horton. Lane in the lane and a foul. I believe that's going to be on number five, Jeremy Lindsay. We've well, seen the call. It is, and it's the under 12 media will take it with them. Partner Sports Network presentation of the Battle of the Beach. Possession for for his team. Substitution incoming. That's Jathan Ross checking in. Lance Williams will go to the bench. Think about or the correction. T.J. Jones will go to the bench. Game three out of four today. We've got one more to go after this. We're about an hour, about 40 minutes off schedule at the start of this. Game. After our previous game took two hours and 20 minutes. There's the handoff, the feed right side, Lindsey with it, and he gets popped with a foul. It's the seventh foul of the half, Geraldo Lane gonna get a hit with that one. So you're gonna be one and one now. 10 minutes and 24 seconds. Yeah. Going to the free throw line. This is a Freed Hardeman team. No, as you noted off the jump, number eight in the country, 
coming into today holding opponents to 36% shooting from the field, averaging 11 and a half steals per game and holding opponents to 57 points per game. So they want to get it done on the defensive end of the floor for sure. Free throw misses there. There's the attack and a foul in that. Wheat looks a little shaken up here. 16 to 11, or 19 to 11 rather, with 10, 11 to go. Allen number 14 of Xavier, Glenn Rome. Just their fourth team foul. And a timeout, couldn't get it in. We'll pause for a moment. Nineteen to eleven, ten oh eight. Yeah. In this opening half, Reed Hardman with a basketball. Powell gets it over to Lane. Lane works it out left side. Off the screen is Wheat. Six to shoot. Horton got to get it out of his hand, and he does and misses the shot. Rebound going the other way. On the ball now is Lance Williams. Three nailed by Jathan Ross. And Wheat gets fouled by Corey Wells. Bound to Wheat. Wheat over to Powell. Looks it ahead. It's going to be lax. Wheat backs it out, deflected, stolen, and going the other way as well. Wheat got himself right down into a trap and an illegal screen up top set by number 14, Glenn Roan. I think that's going to be his second personal. So Roan. Picks up his second and now a couple of players here, one for each team with two fouls already. Corey Dunning, number four, will come check in for him, the 6'9 senior from Lafayette, Louisiana. The attack off the glass and another foul. An auspicious beginning to this one with the number of whistles we've already had. Especially coming off our last game. Nearly 40 total fouls in that one call. Yeah. An ugly, ugly sequence. Wheat to the free throw line where he's hitting about 71.5% on the season. Leading scorer on this line ball club, averaging 15 a game. Yeah, 
Tavia, the team has already gotten a couple of uh, exhibition contests under its belt as well. Division I Alcorn State and Division I Southern Miss. So they've, uh, they've played some interesting ones so far. There's a steal going the other way and a seven-point deficit for the Gold Rush. Looks over left side, now down at the block. Backs his man up, turns around and swatted out of bounds. By Horton. All fired in, caught. Worked over right wing. There's the handoff. Working top of the key. Step back. With the attack down the baseline, deflected out of bounds. And then it kicked off something as it came out of bounds and flew back toward the goal. If that had gone in, I would, the, yeah, I would have gone home. <laughs> it was just Deflection off the chair and through. That's one of those Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, McDonald's yeah. commercial kind of shots. I think at that point you just got to count the basket, right? Yeah. There's the three. And yeah. shot clock. Shot clock violation as it won't get anywhere near the rim there. Corey Wells trying to get that shot off. Seven point ball game, 8.09 to go in the opening half. Over the timeline goes J.J. Wheat. There's Horton, now back over to Wheat. Wheat works it ahead and a steal by Lindsey. It's a great overplay by Lindsey in the post. Not letting that pass come inside. Back over to Lindsey. The attack floats off the glass, no good. And a foul on Lindsey. Or are they calling it on Law, or Lax, right? No, calling on Lindsey and Lax is going to shoot. It'll be one and one, and Lax will walk to the line. So Freed Hardeman with a seven-point lead, 7.37 to go in the first. Lax goes to the line. He's got six points already today. And he'll make the first. Seven points in eight minutes for Quan Lax. One more coming. Got it. Nine-point lead now for Freed Hardman. 7.35 remaining. Over the timeline. Lindsey passes it out right side. There's a the handoff, working back across the face of the basket. Left side. Into the lane, can't get it to go. Freed Hardeman just suffocating most things they defensively. Are. But credit, credit the Gold Rush for staying with it there, getting that possession back, and Corey Wells finishes it. Head to Hort. Ball on the floor. Throws it ahead and a two hand jam for Geraldo Lane. Nine point game again, 640 in County. There's a jumper from the elbow, rip through. Count for the TJ Jones. Count the basket, but I think we're going to have a foul underneath. 13, Corey Wells of Xavier. His second foul. Seven point game, 638 remaining. Now three Xavier players with two fouls. Wells, Roan, and Lindsey. Juan Lax at the line. Back iron, no good, rebound taken down. Worked up the court, into the lane. Off the glass and good for Lindsey. 
Tough take for Lindsay able to get that knocked home through the defense. And now Xavier showing us some full court look. Reed able to corral the long pass his lane and a feed underneath and a nice finish for Devin Tomlinson. 27-20, Freed Hardeman leads it. 6-10 in County. Corner now back up top. Working from the elbow, pulls it. Back iron, no good. Rebound corralled by Skurlock. Skurlock dribbles through traffic. Skurlock nice all the way, coast to coast. Defense never came up, really stopped him. Able to weave his way through right to the cup and lays it up. Extends this lead to nine now for Freed Hardeman. 29-20 with 5.46 remaining, and that's a 30-second timeout, I believe, or do they stretch it to a, they go full on it? I know we're not at the media because we're not at a dead ball, so it looks like we're going to stay here with a 30-second timeout, and we'll keep it here. Listen, if you're out there, you want to let us know. We'll give you a shout-out as we have opportunity. Email us, fsn at faulkner.edu, fsn at faulkner.edu. Let us know who you are, who you are watching for, and where you're watching from. FSN at Faulkner.edu. Give the opportunity, give you a shout out as we have opportunity. Twenty. The Lions of Freed Hardeman shooting a blistering 62 and a half percent from the floor so far. Four out of seven from three. Over the timeline. Back in the hand of Lynch. Attempt at an entry pass to the paint. Wells wanted Morgan and couldn't connect. That's the dead ball. Media timeout. We'll take it with them. Partner Sports Network presentation of the Battle of the Beach. Here live five and a half to go in the opening half. Sent over right side, that's law. Xavier now zoning out defensively. I've been zoning out for a while here. <laughs> Ball up to Law or to Lax rather, and then Lane with the three out of the corner. Lions do a good job attacking the zone, make it move, make it work, and then find the open spot when it overcommits one way or the another. There's the handoff to Lindsay, defended by Lax. Loose ball, Lindsay recovers, drive won't go, rebound fought for, pile on the floor, and they're gonna say Xavier basketball. 
Lindsay took a shot on the floor when three people diving for the loose ball. I think he got popped. So they'll tend to the floor. Stolen going the other way is Skurlock. And he's fouled and no call. And then blocked out of bounds from yeah. behind. And Xavier recovers and then nope. steps on the line. Skurlock, I, I mean, he is wide open for the dunk there and clearly was contact. Unless I just imagined that. I mean, I could have. Again, I've been zoning out for a while. All right, so we're told there's a there's a good Jamaican joint near here that we get to go to in uh, ye old four hours whenever we finish up here. Tay Lindsay just got way too excited over that. I know. There's we still got a lot of basketball there, man. Lay up right and good. Tay Lindsay knows that there's all you can eat fried chicken and we can wheel from four to six, and he's wondering why he's still sitting here producing our breakfast. Panama City Beach, Florida free advertising for lots of restaurants that we don't get to eat at. Yes. <laughs> We had a game go. Four, we had a game go 40 minutes overtime. There's a jumper from the right wing, no good. Rebound taken down by Quan Lutz. Over the timeline, feeds it ahead to Lane in the lane, no good. Rebound taken out, going the other way. Are the Gold Rush? Corey Wells on the ball. Wells works it out to Lindsey. Lindsey attacks, kicks. Wells again, pulls it, knocks it down. That'll cut it to 12, 34-22, and a quick timeout. We'll pause just a second to check and see if any of you have reached out. If you haven't, send us an email, fsn at faulkner.edu. There's one now, Damian Tomlinson. Emails us, says, my son is Devin Tomlinson, number 33 on Freed Hardeman. Granny and the rest of us are all back home in Kansas City, Missouri, watching KCMO. I like that abbreviation for them. I'm actually at work watching on my phone. Thank you guys for pronouncing his last name right. You're the first to get it right this year. Love the kid to death. Go Lions. Great to hear from you guys. And again, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe that's a new name for some people. First off, we have Allie Tomlinson on our staff of the Partner Sports Network. True, and you know, but but also we grew up Tomlinson, Tomlinson, Tomlinson. There it is. Like is is one of the greatest running backs of all time. So you know, but great to hear from the Tomlinson family in Kansas City, Missouri. Working left side. There's a Speak jumper. Of the devil. Oh, in man. and out. Would have been perfect. I mean, perfect. To hit the three right after reading the email from his dad. This would have been perfect. Working over left side. Now back up around the logo. Xavier resetting things. There's Jones all the way into the paint. Gives it up. Pass. Yeah, I mean, he, it was kind of one versus four. Yeah. And he finally decided, oh, I probably can't do anything with this. And he yeah. sort of threw it toward the corner and hoped somebody could catch it. And then throws it offline and puts your pass recipient in a bad situation. And then it's a turnover. Yeah. Over the timeline. Top of the key. Lax. Works it out. Law. Three. Perry. 15-point lead for Freed Hardeman against a really good Xavier team. Puts Peyton Law in the scores column with his first three points. You know, early on, you, you try to identify, you're dealing with the number eight team in the country, so you try to identify what is it, you know, what's the thing. And so far, I think the thing is just it's disciplined, and they do a, they do a lot. I don't know if they do anything necessarily special. They do a lot of things really well. Right. And, and that's a good team. I think that's a good assessment. If you can be consistent and do the little things right, that goes a long way. And we've seen that thus far for Freed Hardeman. There's a three, no good. Rebound taken down, going the other way. 
It's Torin Bell that grabbed the board. Hadn't talked about Bell yet. There's another kick out. Jumper misses and a rebound underneath. Loose ball foul and on somebody. Peyton Long on the push on the rebound attempt. Haven't gotten to talk about Torin Bell yet. That's number 22, the 6'5 sophomore wing out of Loringer, Louisiana. To the line. Free throw, no good on the one and one off the hand of Lance Williams. Tomlinson grabbed the board and we'll go back over the timeline. Lane to Tomlinson. Into the corner. Back up. There's Skurlock. Law. Law. Works it back up top to Lane. Lane. Tomlinson. Four to shoot. Tomlinson attacking downhill. Kicks in the corner lane. Just got it out of his hand. Shot clock violation as it does not draw iron. I think one of the other things that kind of stands out to you about this Freed Hardeman roster when you go through this lineup, yeah, you got a couple of guys in Weed and Lax that are smaller guys at six foot or six one, but you got a lot of guys that are six five, six six, six yeah. seven, playing, you know, anywhere two through five, and I think that, you know. That, that is so difficult to defend. Yeah, a lot of length, a lot of versatility is what that means on the defensive end of the floor, and you see that in their defensive stats yeah. through their season thus far. Kind of that Brad Stevens position was basketball right. thing. You got to feel like Drew Stutz probably studied a lot of that. A loose ball picked up going over the timeline. Back out. They'll reset things to 25 with shot clock, 46 to play. Corey Wells on the ball. Wells kicks it in the corner. Looking for help, now finds it. There's Wells again. Falling down, travel. heaves it up, and they go travel. He thought he was going to get an and one opportunity, and they waved it off and said travel. So, big swing there from what Wells expected and what he got. Wheat looks to collect the inbound pass from Scarlock momentarily, 33.9 on the game clock. As we near halftime of game three, day one, battle at the beach. Ball thrown ahead. That's Lax. Lax. The attack. Feeds it over right side. Up top. Now Skurlock turns the corner. Hand off. Into the paint. There's a three. Buried. And a 15-point advantage for Freed Hardeman. Xavier trying to get one last look at it before the half. Kick, didn't Doesn't get it off it. in time. And Freed Hardeman is up 15 as halftime arrives. They've shot 56% from the floor, 53.8% from three, seven makes on 13 attempts. They've been good in every phase so far and only turned it over, you know, seven's probably a higher number than you want, but it hadn't hurt. No, it hasn't. And, and they've got 10 assists on 14 made baskets. And you start looking at that bench points for Freed has been a big thing. 18 points off the bench for, for them. Again, showing that versatility and depth. 12 points in the paint as compared to 10 for Xavier. But you start looking at some of those things. It's, it's points off turnovers. Yeah. Xavier has nine turnovers. Freed has put that into 15 points off of those turnovers as opposed to three for Xavier. They haven't cashed in the opportunities to be able to, to make Freed hurt and pay for those seven turnovers that they've had. One more shout out here as we go to break. Abby Stutz emails and says the Stutz family is watching from Killing, Alabama. Go Lions, great to hear from you, Abby Stutz. Again, you're out there, you want to let us know, email us fsn at faulkner.edu, fsn at faulkner.edu. And one more quick thing for you, if you have enjoyed it, a Faulkner Sports Network broadcast at any point, I want to ask you if you would go to give.faulkner.edu, give.faulkner.edu. Uh, we've always kept our broadcast free and we've, stri we've striven to do that. I have warded off multiple requests to make us a paid broadcast because I just feel like this is the service we want to provide for not only the parents of our student athletes, but for all the student athletes that 
uh, we would be able to broadcast games for. We do things like this event and, uh, and, and lots of other neutral site contests that we broadcast, and we try to always make sure you're not watching a game and feeling like the announced team is against your team. We're certainly not. We love small college athletics, and we root for every athlete that we cover. Now, as a, as a favor, I'm asking you to go to give.partner.edu and consider donating to our Giving Tuesday campaign, which for us is help us to fund the bus. We're trying to buy an athletics department, an athletic department bus so we can stop sending our golf team on charter buses and our cross country team on charter buses. You know, it's, uh, it's not really good use of, of, of <laughs> but it's funds efficiently, but it's what we've got right now. But it's so very roomy. Yeah, it's quite roomy. <laughs> you know, like 10 people on a charter bus, but we're trying to purchase a bus. And so uh, anyway, we just ask that you consider giving any amount. Five bucks would be one, just whatever you would consider giving. Give.partner.edu and help us buy a bus. Anyway, we're back in 12 minutes on the Partner Sports Network presentation of Battle of the Beach.
coached at Alabama Christian Academy, and we've disowned him. We're not friends with him anymore. <laughs> so we miss him, though. We love Coach Jake Mitchell. And so, again, yeah, Jake Mitchell, part of the Faulkner staff, and then Creed Hardiman, and then the Faulkner men's program, uh, ran this event for a couple of years, an instrumental part of, of this Battle at the Beach event. Uh, and so great to hear from all of you out there. Again, you out there, you want to let us know, email us, fsn at faulkner.edu. FSN at Faulkner.edu. Let us know who you are, who you are watching for, and where you're watching from. 19 and a half to go in this one, a 15-point lead. And listen, I think it's important to point out, our friends at NAI Hoops Report pointed it out as well in, in their Twitter. And if, uh, again, if you're an NAI basketball fan, follow the NAI Hoops Report on Twitter. They do as good of a job as you could imagine in covering NAI basketball. They are the uh, the absolute source to go to. But as you check them out, they point out, you know, Freed Hardman's playing still without the services of Riley McLaren, who is, is unavailable. And McLaren is a guy who averaged 12.1 points a game last season and shot 40% for three, uh, their leading score from a year ago. So when you're looking at a team as the number eight team in the country, the type of yeah. – the type of year they've put together so far um, and what they're doing here today with a 15-point advantage in the second half and, of course, a long way to go. But you, then you add in a guy like Riley McLaren, like how good could this team be? Right, and, and that's, that's a great point. Knowing what you got coming on the way and that, you know, Calvary is coming, if you will, and that you just throw him into the mix with, J.J. Weed and, and Lux and Skurlock and Law and these other guys, and that adds a lot of depth to this team, and it brings a whole other element in with it as well. Xavier down 16 with 19.06 to go. There's the hand off top of the key. Looks to turn the corner, now back out. Sends it over right wing. Left side, D3, off target front iron. Great job following his shot. Now works it back over right side, that's Wells. There's the attack, lost it, batted about. There's Wells again, kicks it in the corner and just errant on the pass. Look, they don't come away with what they want out of that possession, but I feel like that was one of the better possessions in terms of ball movement that Xavier has had in this ballgame. I would agree with that. They did a good job whipping the basketball around, trying to find that open shot, and, and it, had the look in the corner, pass was just high. Ball thrown ahead. Now right wing, that's going to be Lax with it. Back up to Tomlinson. Left side, Weed on the attack, back out with it, and gets it poked out in the paint. Steel going the other way. Wells on the basketball for the gold rush. Looking left side, now thrown ahead. Wells turn around, lost it. Law comes out of there with it. He'll push the issue, fires it over. Now feeds Skurlock, lays it up right hand, good. It's good find underneath, Skurlock cutting right to the basket. Another bucket off of a turnover. Now 16-3 is that advantage. There's the attack, and nice finish over the outstretched arm of Law as TJ Jones is able to get it to go. Weed on the basketball, working off the screen from Skurlock. Gets it back out to Tomlinson. Tomlinson turns the corner. He attacks to the block off the glass and good. Strong take, good job by Tomlinson. Kind of coming to a stop and going up with the shot. Could have easily picked up that foul had he taken another step. DJ Jones on the basketball. Tomlinson will pick him up top of the key. Now works it over right side. That's going to be Ross with it. Ross back out. Lindsey. Lindsay on the attack downhill through traffic, lays it up right hand good. He is hard to stay in front of. Very quick on that first yeah. step, very slippery as he gets into the paint. The first step is explosive as we've really seen today, for sure. Back up top, Skurlock now, working right side. Skurlock back out to Wheat. Tomlinson, ball fake, escape, dribble, pulls the two and hits it. We're going to get a whistle as Tomlinson is injured following that jumper. I think he came down on a foot and uh, his ankle. Able to walk off, though, which is a good sign. Hope he's okay. Tomlinson 
quickly to the end of the bench to be taken care of. He's played a really good game so far. Six points, three rebounds, an assist, and a block in 13 minutes for him. Email comes in from Janelle McNeil. She says, hey, from Jaquan Lax's mother, all the way from Bolivar, Tennessee. Let's go, FHU. We're watching. Great to hear from you, Ms. McNeil. And Juan, of course, one of the starters on this free Hardeman team. Eight points, three rebounds, five assists in 19 minutes. I'd say that's pretty efficient. Yeah. Um, again, you're out there, you want to let us know, email us fsn at faulkner.edu, fsn at faulkner.edu. Let us know who you are, who you watch it for, where you watch it from. We'll give you a shout out as we have opportunity. Of course, this is one of those, you know, obviously with us being uh, Faulkner folks and, and Freed Hardman being a sister school and Fort Cog being a sister school, we've had a lot of, of connections through those programs. But also through doing this event and, and other similar events, we've been able to get to know a lot of the NAIA coaches and players and get to see them. And, uh, and so it's always fun to me to hear from parents of those of the players and, the, and fan base, fan bases who are watching and reach out to us. Because uh, I just, man, I've told you before, I think one of the coolest things in the world is college athletics when you've got players from all over the country and sometimes even from all over the world because it, are you know, come together for this sport that they share this this passion for and share this love of. And uh, to get to sit down and call these games is, is a pretty cool thing to do. Working over right side in the middle of the floor, now gives it back up and there's an elbow pull from Tracy Steele. And, and the hand in the cookie jar for Lance Williams. Yeah, it's one of those. Words are hard. Yeah, oh, that is. And, uh, one of those. Sort of a frustrating foul for a coach because you're 90 something feet away from the basket. There's, you know, not a reason to foul right there. So two fouls on Xavier here in the half, 16-29 to go. Turns the corner, now backs it back out. That's live. Gave it up left side. Geraldo Lane with it. Into the lane. Back out to Skirlock. To Law. Over Fort deep three. Deep three. A little short. 16-10 remaining, and there's the drive to the block. Nice feed across the paint, and the foul is going to let Lance Williams shoot two. Foul's going to be on Horton of Freed Hardeman. So Horton picks up his first personal. Lance Williams to the charity strike. Averaging 12 on the season, 12 points per game, about 61% from the free throw line through their three games. Skurlock hands the ball off and will go over the timeline in a 17 point ball game. Under 16 to play now. Skurlock works it over left side, and Raldo Lane gets it back out to Horton. Now right side, the attack downhill from Lax back out to Law. Law to Skurlock. There's Lane. Picked clean by Lindsey, but he couldn't pick it up and turns it over. I don't know that he ever had possession, so we'll see where they put the shot clock. Should be 19, I would think. No, they no. reset it to 20. Conversation here. They're checking the clock situation. 15:44 is what we've got on the game clock. Now reset the shot clock down to 11. Ball tied over right side. There's the attack and charge. charge. No block. No, they go block. Okay. So Skurlock. The beneficiary of the contact on that one. Email comes in from Kerry Kassler. Says, thank you for sharing. And go Lions from the family of Grant Burns, assistant coach. Ball worked over left side. Foul is on number zero of the Gold Rush, Tracy Steele. 
is in the ball game, I believe for the first time. Scurlock dumps it down low, there's Horton. Horton back out with it. Scurlock, three off target, rebound tipped out of bounds. Should be Gold Rush basketball, and it is. You talk about the connections with Freed Hardeman, and you know, obviously I attended there for two years, many moons ago, before graduating from Faulkner. My wife is a Freed Hardeman graduate, but I didn't meet her. She wouldn't have liked me. <laughs> not, not sure she likes me now. <laughs> 47 to 30 with 15.05 to go. There's the attack into the paint. Layup right hand off target. Horton. Brings it down and takes it across the timeline. Law back out, throws it away, scooped up by Horton. Into the paint, Lax can't get it to go. Skurlock follows, can't get it to go. But a foul. Skurlock is fouled by Wells of Xavier. Now going to be four, I believe, on Xavier this half. Those are starting to add up. We started the day with one of the most improbable finishes that you'll see at any level of basketball. Need to remember to record Sports Center tonight and see if it makes the top 10 list. It's got a real chance. 48 30 is the score. It was Florida College trailing Sagu by 23 at one point in that game. They only led for 25 seconds in the first half and then never led again. Until the end. Yeah, well, and, and again, technically never led. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they were down two at the free throw line with one shot left. Missed it on purpose what rebound. They kicked it out, drained to three at the buzzer and won the ball game. Pretty take going right to the rim. It was a pretty take. So then you followed that up with just a physical, like there were there were there was no altercation. Like, it's as physical as a game can be with, with everyone still playing within the, the rules of the sport and sportsmanship. But Texarkana and Loyola is an absolute just but two teams, just defensive-minded teams really struggling was. And, and fighting with one another. And that game lasted two hours and 20 minutes. And now here, Freed Hardeman has put on an exhibition so far. 16-point game, but Xavier trying to get back in it. Key for Xavier right now feels like it's just maximizing possessions. They can't, there's a three, and that's one of the better looks they've had. Really good into the corner for Jathan Ross, movement without the ball. Yeah. They, they've passed, I feel like, tell me if, you, if, if I'm wrong. The idea of attacking and kicking, very much part of what they're trying to do, but it seems like they've kicked late yes. on so many of these. And and that's what's cost him is the pass is unclean and the catch is unclean and, and everything's just off. But if, if they kick half a second earlier right. or a second earlier, then this is a different looking ball. They're letting the defenders commit too much. Yeah. You want to get that initial commit and then pass it out and allow then typically you have the initial pass out, then the help comes from either the wing or down low, kick it back up or down for the, the best shot that you've got available. And they're waiting, like you said, just that half a second too long. The defense is committing and collapsing just enough on you. They're deflecting the ball, they're, they're tipping it, and they're slowing the pass down. And by the time your player catches it, the defense has already had a time to react and respond to that and jump out on the play defensively. So, it, again, it's incredible defense for Freed Hardeman. But I think if, if Xavier can match that intensity and, and pass that ball off just a little bit quicker and look, they're shooting three of 11 from three in this ball game. Uh, try to attack the paint a little, little bit more. Try to get those easier looks inside. And once you drive inside, you, you collapse the defense. Don't maybe look for the three, but look for that, that mid-range jumper or a, a cut coming from a wing and try to get an easier look than the three and see if that gets you going and rolling here offensively. Now they're going to defend the whole floor here. Ball gets into Horton. Checking into the ball game is Powell for the Lions. Over the timeline, ahead to Horton. Horton fires it over to Powell. That's Law. Horton. The attack back out. Three from Geraldo Lane. There. Lane now with 12. 
He's the first to double figures for the Lions. 51, 35, 13, 19 to go. Dump down, corralled by Wells, up with it off the glass and good. Might have been rewarded with yeah. the whistle if they were generous. That's a good feed inside, over the top. Defender tried to go for it, couldn't get there. And then once the defender did that, he had an easy shot right at the basket. There's Lax with it. Works it over to Horton. Long. Working right side, feeds it down to Horton. Horton. Misses the jumper, rebound Geraldo Lane. They're gonna say, let's see, shot clock reset. Yeah, it didn't reset in time, so they're gonna move the shot clock to 18. Inbound will come to Lax. Lax on the attack, back up to Horton. Horton into the lane, kicks it out, and there's a foul call. They're gonna put it on number 22 of the Gold Rush, and that's Torin Bell. for the foul, didn't get that, but he did get the buck. Get over top of the key, kicks it left side, Lindsey. Free throw line wouldn't go. 16 point game. Lane's got it. Works off the screen to Horton, now down in the corner. Sweet with it. Weak to Horton. Law. Feeds it. Lane finishes. So Geraldo Lane now with 14. Into the corner. There's the attack. Will fade on the jumper. Pretty shot for Jason Ross. Was. Good job allowing the defender to blow by and then raising up. Fading away just enough, make that shot a little cleaner. He's got 13, that's the high for Xavier. Law finishes at the bucket there. He's got five and the lead goes to 18. And it just feels like Xavier's having to work harder for their points right now. And sometimes it feels that way, I think, because you're working uphill, but a lot of that is the way that the help defense keeps right. collapsing for Freed Hardeman. As is, it's the under 12 media timeout and an 18 point game at 11.13 to go. Fought Sports Network presentation of the Battle at the Beach.
57, 39, 11, 11 to go. Xavier with the basketball, trying to cut into an 18 point deficit. There's Wells, pulls it from the elbow and good. Now Xavier's gotta come up with stops. There's Wheat, turns the corner, kicks it. Scurlock, got it to Lane and right downhill. 16 for Lane. Pretty take for Lane, using the defender against you. Corey Dunning coming out on the closeout, aggressively puts that foot down and then Lane just goes right to the basket. Ross got the ball back out to Jones. Working left side, now Wells. He's gotta give it up. There's the attack, pulls it. Ross can't get it to go, gets his own rebound, feeds middle of the floor, and the effort from Dunning won't go, but a foul. Couple of defenders in the area. They pick Peyton Law, maybe? Yep, yep. Peyton Law. Eighteen point game with ten fourteen to go. Law will check out. Two fouls on him. Nobody's got more than two for Freed Hardeman. Wells is the only player with at least three in the game. It's Lindsay. He'll go over the timeline and a foul on Wheat. His second. Look at the balance of the scoring. Of course, Lane has 16. Lax and Weed each have eight. Powell's got seven. Tomlinson's got six. Skurlock and Law each have five. Horton's got four. Yeah, top to bottom, you got you got guys that can go out and get you, you know, 10, 11 points, and that's a dangerous thing. Yeah. Because you never know on a given night who to take away. Right. That one deflected. Off, off the Xavier player. Yeah. So Freed Hardeman's going to get possession here. For Xavier, Ross has got 13, Wells has got 11. 18 point game, and there's a steal going the other way for Lindsey. Throws it down with a one hand jam. Lax. Over the timeline. Has it poked loose. Picked up by Lindsey. And now looking for Wells and throws it away. If you're here for a six o'clock tip between Faulkner and Warner, it'll be six o'clock somewhere by the time we get it started. But more likely you're looking at a uh, 7, 7.15 kind of tip. There's the attack into the paint. Swatted back by Wells. Off and running. Euro step. Pretty, pretty step inside for Lindsay. Lindsay now at 12, no, 10 rather. So 14 point ball game with 9.06 to go. We're going to get a timeout. We'll take it with them. Clark Sports Network.
He now comes in. Shout out to Michael Mullenix. He says, let's go. Lions bring us two W's to Henderson. That's Michael Mullenix, the voice of FHU basketball. Great to hear from you, Michael. 14-point ball game, 8.50 to go in this one. And there's a three for the right wing and on target for Jathan Ross. 8.40 and canning in what is suddenly an 11-point ball game. Fred Hardeman needs a good possession here. Points or not. I'll get you back. There it is. Skirlock. Great And a good cut. feed and lay up with the right hand. Good underneath for Quan Lax. Back to 13. You know, you reflect on that Florida College Sagu game early. Very similar. Uh, Xavier, rather, trying to do something very similar to what Florida College accomplished earlier, where Florida College was down 23, came all the way back, and won that game at the buzzer. Part of what enabled Florida College to do that is that Sagu didn't use the shot clock to its advantage yeah. with that big of a lead, and they took had a lot of bad looks, and that helped Florida College in that effort. So you look at Freed Hardeman here, the ability to use that shot clock and shorten this ball game with a 13-point lead, very important. Yeah, and that's it's really a complete different style from Sagu. Sagu wanted to get up, it wants to get up and down and run. Freed Hardeman, not necessarily that way. They they're content using the shot clock and looking for the very best shot they possibly can, and and that does benefit them in this situation. But also we're seeing. We saw some good possession from Xavier, but we're also seeing a lot of kind of iso ball. And that's not making the defenders have to work. And you're letting them kind of sit back and relax in a lot of ways, at least three of them on that end of the floor. 13-point ball game with 7.35 remaining. There's the attack downhill, kicks it. There's a three out of the corner. Buried again for Jeremy Lindsay, and all of a sudden, the three ball starting to fall for Xavier, whereas they were not hitting that shot early. Yeah, and that was a good job, again, by the, the guard getting inside, drawing really four defenders. He could have kicked it a couple different places. Kicks it to that corner, the shortest three on the court. Drops it in, now a 10-point ball game, and, and Xavier's right back in it. Plenty of time for them to, to cut into this lead and chip away even more. So Xavier was two out of nine from beyond the arc in the first half. They're now three out of four here in the second half. They shot 38.5% from the floor in the first half. They're at 57.9% from the floor in the second half. So the game coming back to them a lot here. And free for its part, still shooting well, 60% from the floor, but for Xavier, they normalize their shooting percent percentages. They get better possessions. Yeah, they're absolutely in this ballgame. One hundred percent. And free now at this point. Use the clock. The clock is is your friend. Use the clock as much as you can. Get get an absolute good shot. And on the def defensive end, you got to know what they're going to try to do. It's the thought is to try to drive and kick and, and open up. Good shooting lanes that way. You can't overbite and over overcompensate on those. Good to see Tomlinson back out on the floor. He had to leave with an injury earlier. There's Tomlinson, works it over right side to Lax. Lax back to Skurlock. Skurlock wants to get it to Wheat. Can't do it. They took Wheat away there. There's Lax now. Five on the shot clock. Skurlock into the lane. Right hand finished strong for Hunter Skerlock. 12 point game, 6.55 to go. Can Xavier answer? Ball thrown ahead to Wells. Lindsey is the guy they'd like to get it to. Tough cover, but he turns it over, lost his balance there. Tomlinson slows it down. 12 point lead and a good possession here for the Lions. Could run it back up to a five possession game. Feeds it underneath the Skirlock. Skirlock tries to feed Tomlinson, but it's deflected out of bounds and they're gonna give it to Freed Hardeman with nine on the shot clock. Ah. 
You know, it's funny, uh, we talk about small college basketball, and it's just sort of the world of college athletics. Xavier, of course, located in New Orleans, Louisiana. Hard to ask for a bigger city to go to college in. And Fried Hardeman from Henderson, Tennessee. <laughs> Hard to ask for a smaller town to go to a college in. Scarilla picks it up, fires it over to Tomlinson. Four to Three. shoot. Tomlinson just turns around Traveling. and throws it up. They call him for a travel, and Tomlinson does not look like he feels very good right now as he limps down the floor. They got to come get him. I don't know if that's the ankle he rolled earlier, if he got, got the knee knee to knee collision there. Neither's good, though. No. Horton checks in for Tomlinson. Now, Henderson, Tennessee, a delightful small town experience. But it, the juxtaposition versus New Orleans, really interesting. Two completely different college experiences for these two teams. Here's the drive, tipped alive, and out of bounds. That'll get us to the under six media timeout. I remember my two years in Henderson, Tennessee. Lived in Paul Gray Hall. This is in a pre-streaming world. So you wanted to watch movies, you had to walk down to the reel-to-reel -reel video. Like, but that was, you know, many moons ago. 20 bucks, or five bucks, right? 20 bucks. 20 bucks, right? Last year, a month. Right? But five bucks would get you two movies and two whoppers. Two you know? movies and two whoppers. That was a Friday night. It is. 63-51, so, your score. And you're out there. Let us know. FSN at partner.edu. Tell us who you are who you're watching for and where you're watching from. 12-point ball game with 549 remaining. One thing Xavier's done in this half is they've done a better job of making Freed pay for their turnovers. They've now uh, points off turnovers. It's a 16-11 advantage for Freed, but it was much more than that coming out of the first half. So they've done a much better job of, of capitalizing on those opportunities. Points in the paint, they've closed that gap some. It's 28-22. Uh, just they've been a little bit more focused here in the second half on on the little things and, and Getting themselves better looks and that's what's clawed them back within this game here is 12 point advantage now But still nearly six minutes remaining here time for them to, to make this in, even more interesting 12 point ball game deep baseball pass to the opposite end of the floor make sure they get that ball in and get possession Torin Bell on the drive, no good, and shot a shot clock. clock violation. So you come out of the timeout, you want a little bit better of a possession than what Xavier was able to get there. Again, that was caused by the, the defense from the Lions. They weren't able to get what they wanted on the initial action, had to throw the deep pass in to get the ball in, and then it was downhill and just couldn't get, get the finish on the rim there. Skerlock loses it. Look at the scrap for the ball, and now Quan lags. Geraldo Lay, two-hand jam. 14-point ball game. Quan lags not giving up on the play. Created that. Oh, hard, hard contact. This is tough of a screen as you're going to see. My goodness, is he okay? And insult to injury, you got hit with the foul yeah. running into the body. Quan Lax got redirected and bounced hard off the floor and he's called for the foul. That is as hard of a screen as you're going to see. You can see Quan Lax up. 14 point game, 513 remaining. All thrown in. If there's anything good, it prevented them from getting the, the shot the look off. The was it. there, yeah. yeah. It over left side. There's Lindsay. And Lindsay falls down and slides, and a block called against Freed Hardeman. It's going to go on Skurlock. Skurlock called for that, and you're going one and one here. That's the fourth foul on Skurlock. That bear's watching. 
Lindsay to the free throw line. Gerlach, seven points, three rebounds, two assists, a steal, and a block. Done a little bit of everything, but the four fouls. <laughs> Going to cause him to have to be a little safe here down the stretch. First free throw up and good. Our buddy Jalen Perry out there watching from Switzerland sends us a message. I'll save to read during the Faulkner game because I know the Faulkner faithful want to hear from Jalen Perry. Left side, there's the handoff. Lindsey, the attack downhill, can't get it to go. 13 point game, thrown ahead to Skerlod. Skerlod gets fouled. Hand checked by Jones. One more to put him in the bonus. Thrown to Skerlod. Backing it out is Lax. There is Horton. Law. Back to Skirla. Good back to Lane. Nice, nice feed back to Horton and Lane with a pretty assist. It's just smart basketball. Horton goes to the basket trying to get to the rim and then, or Lane rather, then Horton backs off right to the free throw line and gets the easy look at the free throw line jumper. 15 point game, 4-16 to play. Looking ahead to tomorrow for our fans of each of these teams. Give you an idea of what's next. And we'll touch on that in a moment. We get ready to inbound the basketball here. As that is Lindsay to get it into Wells. From top of the key, downhill is Jones. Into the corner, thought about it. Ross gave it up. There's a three off target off the hand of Lance Williams. Working is Lax. He'll attack, feeds, Horton, finishes. Now Horton's got eight. Back over the timeline, all the way to the rack, up with it, right hand, won't drop, tip the live, Skurlock will grab it, and a whistle. As they sort that out, Xavier will play the final game of the, the Battle at the Beach tomorrow when they take on Warner for a scheduled 5 p.m. tip. Freed Hardeman in a matchup of Lions will take on Sagu at 1 p.m. tomorrow. We start the action tomorrow at 11 o'clock with Loyola against Florida College. Then we get Sagu and Freed Hardeman, Faulkner against Texarkana at 3 o'clock, and Xavier and Warner at 5. 18-point game, 3.25 to go. Skerlock makes it a 19 point game again. So Xavier made its run, they got it cut to 10, but it, it feels like they may run out of gas here tonight, trying to dig out of that deficit. Freed Hardeman has continued to be efficient. Dave Turner, you're talking about a team that's now shooting 68% from the floor in the second half. About as good as you can get, and, and look, they've really limited their three-point opportunities here in the second half. Only one of three. It's only three attempts from beyond the arc as a foul's called on the shot attempt. Yeah, they've really gone to work in the paint. Yeah. They're at a ten-point advantage in the paint. There's really no sense in jacking up a bunch of threes if you've got the lead unless it's the absolute best shot. Wells makes that free throw. That's going to get Wells to 12 points. One more look coming for him. Back iron, no good. Skerlock the board. There's the handoff. Wheat over the timeline. Flips it back over. Skerlock. Backing it out is Law. Works it right side, Wheat. 
Five to shoot. Got to get it out of his hand, and he floats it up, rattles off, no good. Rebound taken down. Going the other way is Tracy Steele. There's Wells. Steele. Drive in the lane, and for all the lane swats the shot, but there's a foul. I think the foul is before the shot. Yeah. That's on Skurlock, and that's five. 9.6 rebounds, two assists, a steal, and a block for Hunter Skurlock on the day in 26 minutes of action as he heads to the bench. Juan Lax, the man our live stats say will be checking into the game. So, 71-53, 2.33 to play. Xavier got, got a chance to go to the line here. throw up and good. One more coming from Tracy Steele. That's his first point of the day. Give him two. Got to cut it to 16 with two and a half to play. Ball thrown to Lax. Now Law with it. A smart move by Law. Could have thrown it up underneath for a bucket, but wisely just let's use the clock, gets it back out. Let's run as, run as much of this as we can. Lax, Horton. Horton. Back out. Up with it is Lane, and he gets it to go. So Lane's got 20. Used every yeah, second was, of the shot clock. So I was going to say, you use every second that you can, and you still get two points out of it. Best possible situation for the Lions on that one. 18-point game, a minute 46 to go. Steele launches the three. Tip the line, and Horton's got it. Horton works it over to Lax. Lax over the timeline. There's Law. Law to Horton. Lane. Lane will back it out. Law. Lax again. Two to shoot. Gets all the way to the lane and lays it up again. And so Lax has got 12. The lead's 20 with a minute five to go here. Freed Hardman putting the finishing touches on its fifth win of the season as they get ready for a contest against a Southwestern Assemblies of God team tomorrow that you know um, is, I would expect, is going to be emotional and, and driven yeah. as they come out tomorrow. Now, emotions can be a bad thing. They I can. would anticipate that they're going to be, they're going to be quite hungry after what happened today. And that'll be an interesting clash of styles. Stylistically, it's a Sagu team that is not all that different from Xavier in terms of, of the style of ball that they play. But they're, there's, I think, more balance in their, in their scoring. And yeah. they, they do have a little bit more post presence. Uh, and so it'll be an interesting clash of styles as they take on Freed Hardeman. Inside a minute to go here and a travel call. Now, Xavier, they'll face Warner in the final game of the day. Tomorrow will be the last game of, of the tournament for us. So, Warner to face Faulkner here in just a little bit, 20 minutes after the conclusion of this one. There's the drive, step through, up off the glass, and a whistle. 44.2 remaining in a 19-point game. 
Law will foul out. He heads to the bench with five points, two rebounds, an assist, and two steals. About 21 assists and 29 made baskets That's for Freed Hardman. That's exactly what I was looking at on at these stats, just an unreal assist per bucket ratio on that. And it, it just shows how well and how in sync this team is right now. And they don't care who gets, gets the bucket. Jaquan lacks with nine assists in the ball game. One assist away from a double-double. You know he's going to go back, look at that number, and find somebody that missed a shot off his pass. <laughs> so what are you doing? 75-56, 44.2 left. One more free throw coming from Williams. Got it. 75-57, ball thrown in by Powell, and there's a foul. Eighteen point lead. Free throw coming. Sets and he shoots and he knocks it down, does Lax. So 13 and nine for Quan Lax. And four rebounds as well for Lax, yeah. doing a little bit of everything. 14 and nine. 41 and a half to go, 20 point game. Over the timeline. About a, an 11 second difference between shot and game as Williams fires that three and it's good. So Williams has got seven. Ball ahead and travel. and travel. Shot clock is off, 23.7 to go. There's Williams again. Turns the corner, nice feed, and a foul. So Dunning will go to the line. Horton called for the foul. Two on him. We'll start to wrap this one up for you here. Twenty-five rebounds for the Lions, twenty-three for the Gold Rush. Make it twenty-six now for the Lions, who just have to get it over the timeline. And the trap comes, and he can't get rid of the basketball, and so we have to stop the clock again. Five seconds left in a 17-point ball game. If that's not our last whistle, I'm going to call for a federal investigation. 17-point game, five seconds left. Inbound coming from Horton. Got it in to Wheat, and that'll wrap it up. So, Freed Hardeman with a 77 to 60 victory over Xavier in this one. 20 points for Geraldo Lane, 14 for Quan Lax, nine for Hunter Skurlock, eight for JJ Wheat, eight for Phil Horton, seven for Powell and six for Tomlinson. Again, balance all the way throughout. Ross had 16 for Xavier, 14 for Lindsay, and 12 for Wells. Again, Freed Hardeman playing tomorrow at 1 p.m. against Sagu. And Xavier playing tomorrow night, 5 o'clock against Xavier. For our friends from both those schools, thank you for watching us. Have a good night. And God bless you. This has been the Partner Sports Network presentation of the Battle of the Peach.